hi there uh, karibu tuko za matunda and uh, a happy mashujade to all our viewers in Kenya uh, today is a holiday and uh, that means we have some spare time <coughs> some spare time to come and uh, check on the progress of our project and I think it's been a while since I last uh, posted a video on uh, our Naivasha Papu Passion uh, project. Um, and we've made some tremendous uh, progress. As you can see, uh, we have a lot of fruits uh, coming up. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful time because the rains are here right it's been raining uh, recently um, and Naivasha joins other parts of this country that have not been receiving rains but finally the rains are here and if you last check uh, the last update that I had put you will notice that uh, our orchard is becoming bushy and bushy um, with each passing day and uh, look at that see the transformation the color uh, slowly turning color we've tested uh, some fruits have already ripened um, so we've already tested a few um, if I take you back here uh, this particular one, I think we have, yeah, that is actually ready for harvesting, but you can allow it to even take longer. But if you leave it long enough here, what happens is that uh, the leaves, or rather, usually drop by itself, so you'll find it on the ground. So, initially we had a cover crop here, uh, we had our beans, which we have since harvested. Uh, nothing much to talk about the beans um, but uh, I think they we achieved our ultimate target of you know legends are known for fixing nitrogen in the soil so uh, the Sun was too much so and we were not irrigating them, so we we only harvested some very few kgs. Nothing to complain about, they were just a cover crop. Uh, we can always do it again if there is need for. So, um, I've received a number of uh, questions of people asking, uh, at what point do you start uh, expecting to harvest the fruits and uh, today being Mashuja day we are uh, we are actually six months and and ten days old since we transplanted these uh, seedlings here so if you go back then you should be able to um, see we actually transplanted them here on 10th of April so we are six months 10 days old and uh, this is just phase one I'll also be showing you phase two of this project which is on the other side of of the fence uh, which we later planted and uh, yeah, like I said, this is purely learning by doing. Uh, I've told you before that I've grown passion, but not at the scale that I want to do it. Purely as an agribusiness. Um, and as you can see, um, majority, I would say 80% of the vines have already touched. Uh, the trellis, you know, the wire on top. Uh, look at that. This is a very good example. 
um, for some reason some of the vines are way ahead of others it happens and uh, you can see the number of flowers that are currently loading some have already opened up these are the the fruits that we allowed uh, when the wine was climbing up um, and as you can see here we have more and more see those tiny things those are flowers and the vine continues to spread so our future flu fruits will come from these branches that we are supposed to keep on untangling to ensure that they don't uh, you know tie each other because we want our orchard to remain it so once the fruits start forming they automatically uh, because of the weight of the fruits will start uh, hanging down or rather they are forced to drop down like a curtain but in the meantime because they're still forming uh, we just allow them we don't want to disturb them uh, we allow them to continue forming fruits and as you can see it's been a while i think uh, we last did a proper pruning job here like uh, three weeks ago ah uh, and uh, of course the suckers don't disappoint <laughs> if you look here you don't prune your um vines say we usually prune them every two weeks this is what you'll find ah this is a good example you can see all these branches all these side branches um ideally were supposed to have been removed but you were late by one week well uh, it happens um but nothing to worry about we will just find time to come and uh, and prune them today it's more of a uh, checking on the progress we are not really engaging in some serious business here uh, so we'll be back within the week to just come uh, do the pruning so uh, there you have it um, and like I had mentioned to you um, you know we continue to learn valuable uh, lessons and as you can see um, yeah see those side suckers that are coming out ideally ought to have been removed and I had mentioned to you that we also have a bit of popos uh, coming up very well um, and this is a yellow passion uh, yeah also coming up uh, very well and uh, you know besides uh, the usual um, pruning work that has to be done regularly uh, we also recently did uh, another top dress uh, this is to boost our, our fruit uh, production uh, look at that uh, so we did uh, a fertilizer that is rich in uh, potassium and also some other micro and macro nutrients that are needed said on this channel i don't openly speak about brands or stuff that we use because i'm not into endorsement of any brand um but uh these are fertilizers that you use when your vines um start producing fruits and uh they allow you to or rather they enable you the the, the, the vine to um you know uh, they allow the fruit formation to take place and as you can see uh, these fruits are quite big in size and we are really looking forward to the day they will ripen so uh, maybe for the composition of the fertilizers 
Uh, we did uh, uh, add a myriad of potash, uh, something that we always do, and uh, it works wonders in terms of uh, um, increasing the fruit size and also even the fruit bricks level. Uh, besides, uh, you know, fruits require a lot of potassium. So, uh, there you have it. And as you can see, more flowers. We forgot to prune this. And when we did, we just had to prune it, uh, to just clip it, because we, we don't want to lose. Those are how many fruits? One, two, three, four. Uh, so once they are done, then we should be able to remove them completely. And as you can see, these have already touched uh, the wire here. And, uh, you know, you can already see the magic. So with the rains coming, or rather with the rains here with us, even expect more and more fruits. And, uh, of course, a lot of uh, vegetation. Look at those young, beautiful fruits that are coming, and it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful scene. Um, yeah. So, uh, like I've said, uh, one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest things that you need to prepare uh, when you decide to grow these fruits on an agribusiness scale one you have to be very consistent uh, there are those daily or rather weekly practices that have to be done uh, the weeding of course uh, yeah we have I think we have had to budget for weeding uh, every month it's something that we do uh, because the weed also grows very fast so monthly weeding and uh, I had earlier uh, talked to you about the amount of manure that you've used I think at this stage we have done three buckets of uh, well decomposed manure yeah and of course the, we do uh, do a fungal spray every every two weeks to ensure that our crops are well or rather our fruits are well protected so um, for those who are asking about Vasha we have not abandoned the project there we are just a bit of work coming up and on this orchard by the way we also do have some uh, tree tomatoes or tamarillos and they were also planted at the same time and those are beautiful flowers of tree tomato um, a bit of oranges we have I've talked of a uh, popo more popo there we do have an avocado you know it's yeah we are even uh, piloting <laughs> a pineapple yeah it doesn't hurt to try and for us we when if we don't win, we learn something. So yeah, so you can see part of this orchard also has popos and also has uh, tree tomatoes. And you can see a whole line of tree tomatoes. They're all planted at the same time. And they're coming up well. So uh, I'll also be taking you to uh, the other face where you have relatively smaller uh, fruits that we planted uh, later after we had planted this I think they are uh, uh, they are they were planted in in the month of May if it's not June I should be able to confirm from the records so yeah there you have it um, we are hoping and praying that the rains will continue because with the rains, then there's some transformation that you only get whenever it rains. So, 
thank you so much for all the support and for all the feedback and all the nice things that you tell us they keep us motivated and encouraged and uh, yeah see that one that is almost ready for harvesting you can see the color has really changed um, yeah so on this Mashuja day uh, just to wish you all the best and uh, wish us luck in everything that we do so thank you so much uh, I'll be taking you to uh, the other face in part two of this video thank you um so today's the first time i'm showing you the other face this is phase two of naivasha and uh we transplanted these seedlings uh, on uh, the 29th of april um so they are 19 days apart and uh like I've said, these vines are full of surprises. You can see they've already touched um, yeah, the wire on top. And uh, I think the biggest lesson I've learned this far is that uh, one, you may plant these seedlings same day give them same uh, treatment uh, but the results always <laughs> end up being different uh, you can see this has a lot of flowers coming up um, there you go that's a tiny fruit coming up there is a flower that is almost opening and you can see the the fruit inside um, and it goes on and on up there and on this particular one, for example, we've encouraged around four shoots to go up and they all look like they're doing very well. So in my earlier video, I'd say that uh, we were leaving some flowers behind, which have since formed into fruits. Well, for some vines, we did remove everything. So on this particular section, uh, we have uh, um, around 200 vines. It's slightly bigger than uh, I think, uh, yeah, a quarter of an acre. Slightly bigger. And uh, yeah, these are just bananas uh, that we have intercropped um, with. Because this ideally is just an orchard, you know, and an orchard has to feature many uh, fruits. So, ah, there you go. On this line here, we have uh, we have a mango at the end there. It's a banana. That's a citrus, uh, Washington oranges, and we have a few pomegranates to the end there. Uh, and our beautiful passion vines are there all doing very well so um, we are hoping by December we should have uh, enough uh, fruits or rather we should be uh, hitting peak production at 8 months um, and we have no reason to doubt that when we look at the number of flowers if you look around you see some are opening uh, there are flowers everywhere yeah and of course one other thing that i always say is that you have to check for bee bee activities in your flowers today it's a bit dull but in many cases there would be bees here uh, doing their magic um, of course uh, doing the pollination so 
Yeah, there is our phase two um, coming up well. Uh, nothing to worry about. Um, and you can see we've tried to keep our orchard weed free. Yeah, look at that. This seems to be getting it all right. You know, from the flowers to fruits. It has already touched the wire up there. And uh, a lot of flowers and and fruits. Um, and we continue to take good care of them. So um, we even have a phase three on that part that you see up there next to our our farmhouse just a tiny one for that matter but uh, we have space already left for phase three or will be you know uh, growing more passion so eventually uh, we are targeting to at least have an acre uh, of passion growing uh, in this section or rather in our Vasha orchards and I think it's a it's a goal that we have and we hope to achieve that by the end of by the end of the year so uh, there you have it and we are grateful for the journey this far it's not been without challenges uh, but uh, we take every challenge as a learning experience. But uh, bottom line, I think you want to grow these fruits. Uh, two cardinal rules, make sure that you have a good supply of water. That's a must. We, we don't even uh, debate on that. If you don't have uh, a good supply of water, then uh, rain fed water may disappoint you um, the other thing is that uh, make sure that you have enough uh, manure um, farmyard manure does all the magic right and uh, of course be ready to um, you know yeah be ready to prune you know rather there are quite a number of things that I've noticed you can't afford to waste time when uh, when you're growing passion. Uh, if it's pruning time, it's pruning time. Uh, you don't do it, then of course your crop does not, you know, suffers as a result. Uh, weeding, weeding is a must. I must say, please factor that in your budget. Uh, weeding. You'll constantly, you'll keep on constantly uh, weeding your orchard. And as you can see, those are quite a number of fruits, very healthy fruits. Um, yeah, so weeding is also another thing. And of course, you also factor in uh, the money for buying all the agrochemicals that you need, the fungicides, the pesticides, as this fruit is very susceptible to yeah a lot of pests and diseases so there you have it um that's vasha 2 uh phase 2 and uh i think we are doing well uh, and uh, yeah we keep on pressing and hope that uh our project to get to live to see the end so thank you so much and again happy mashujade to you all bye